Namaste. I welcome my student teachers to the course Knowledge and Curriculum. We are in the second unit, Concept and Nature of Curriculum here. The second module talks about the relationship between curriculum framework, curriculum, syllabus and textbooks and their significance in school education. This is Dr. V. Girija, Professor and Head for the Department of School of Education, Ways Institute of Science, Technology and Advanced Study. The prerequisite of this module that what the students uh, should have the knowledge about the foundational understanding of educational philosophy, pedagogy, learning theories and the broader context of education system and the objective of this module is understanding the foundations, analyzing components, aligning with education goals and awareness of trends, social context and facilitating learning. Need for curriculum in schools. Curriculum, as we all know, curriculum has a broader meaning and it helps in achieving this educational aims and objectives. Curriculum is needed in schools in since it contributes in the following ways. It gives necessary constructional frame to achieve educational goals and it indirectly shows the specific path to achieve educational aims and gives effective learning to students by providing a variety of learning experiences. Curriculum mainly helps in children's all-round development. It builds a balanced personality and helps to use of leisure time constructively. Curriculum coordinates the processes of le teach learning, teaching, evaluation and it develops creativity and forward outlook. It contributes to bring quality of equality of education. Curriculum helps teachers to maintain quality education. It sets standards, goals and learning outcomes that enable the teachers to judge whether or not students are able to move on to the next level. An effective curriculum provides teachers, students, administrators and community stakeholders with a measurable plan and structure of delivering quality education. It contributes to bring equality of education. Curriculum helps teachers to maintain quality education. It sets standards, goals and learning outcomes that enable teachers to judge whether or not students are able to move on to the next level. An effective curriculum provides teachers, students, administrators and community stakeholders with a measurable plan and structure for delivering quality education. Curriculum develops discipline to achieve education aims. An effective curriculum provides the teachers, students, administrators and community stakeholders with a measurable plan and structure for delivering quality education. Curriculum develops discipline to achieve education aims. It makes education aims move in a right path through which they develops discipline. It provides opportunity to students to participate in curricular and co-curricular activities and it helps to develop qualities such as friendship, cooperation, compassion and also it, it contributes to bring equality of education. Curriculum helps teachers to maintain quality education. It helps standards, goals and learning outcomes that enable teachers to judge whether or not students are able to move on to the next level. A curriculum identifies learning outcomes, standards and core competencies that students must demonstrate before advancing to the next level. An evidence-based curriculum acts as a roadmap for teachers and students to follow the path to academic success. It helps to understand the diverse culture, social system and cultural heritage of people living in different parts of the country. A curriculum is needed in carrying successfully educational programs. The aspects in school knowledge. A school is one of the agencies which write down, transact and transform knowledge and thereby influence the life of children who attend school for a specified number of years. School facilitates and distributes knowledge among its inmates. Though human individual gets knowledge from every experience in life, the knowledge that a child receives in school decides his or her future life and place in society knowledge. Since a teacher as professional deal as professional deal with knowledge, there is need to understand the concept of knowledge, teaching, learning, timetable, examination, etc lead to acquire knowledge through the curriculum. So, knowledge acquired through curriculum in school context is school knowledge. In school knowledge, learning happens when we connect new information to what we already know. With respect to school knowledge, students get experience in the classroom, process being taught in the school and classroom, 
and knowledge is imparted through different subjects. Curriculum is the sum total of the school's efforts to influence learning whether in the classroom, on the playground or out of school. The real goal of education is learning to learn. Curriculum is taught in, in a school. It is a program of study. Curriculum refers to lessons and academic content taught in a school. Its goal is to improve the learning opportunities. The curriculum is a well-planned, designed and guided by the government of educational institution. It is aimed at both physical and mental development of a student. Curriculum can refer to the entire program provided by the classroom, school or state. A classroom is assigned, section, assigned sections of the curriculum as defined by the school. Curriculum includes the educational environment and program of study. It focuses on the body of knowledge, information that a teacher teaches and students are expected to learn in a given subject or content such as English, science, etc. Students learn facts, concepts and principles taught, learned in a specific course. A classroom curriculum is a sequence of activities jointly developed by teachers and students and parents and communities that reflects their understanding of the potential of a programmatic uh, curriculum. Curriculum works on all sections of the student's psyche and aids in the total development of the student. It provides a structured platform which gives every child an equal opportunity to excel. Curriculum provides formal experience in the classroom. It includes the experiences of the students and content and instructional methods. Here, school knowledge is the source of information. Knowledge and culture are organized and knowledge imparted through different subjects. Curriculum provides the basic knowledge that is tacit, explicit and contextual knowledge related to classroom subjects to real life. School knowledge is based on textual knowledge and knowledge acquired here is incidental also. Reflection of school knowledge in the form of syllabus. Uh, very frequently the term curriculum and syllabus are used interchangeably but there is a great difference. Curriculum is a wider term and includes syllabus. Syllabus is defined as a document that consists of a topic or portion covered by a particular subject. Syllabus is a teaching plan. It is the summary of the topics covered or units to be taught in the class. It, its meaning is narrow because it only develops specific competencies. The syllabus is provided to students by teachers so that they can develop an interest in a subject. It is fixed normally for a year and syllabus includes knowledge aspect and curricular activities. The word syllabus is derived from the modern Greek word syllabus meaning list. In a narrow sense, syllabus holds the methodology selection and grouping of contents. The purpose of syllabus, it allows students to work the schedule for their maximum efficiency and effectiveness. Syllabus is an academic document that communicates course information and defines expectations and the responsibilities. It is descriptive. There are essential components in an academic syllabus. Academic syllabus contains seven essential components such as instruction and information, general course information, course objectives, course policies, grading and evaluation, learning resources and the course calendar. School, school knowledge in the form of textbook. A textbook is one of the common resources used in a classroom. It is a guide for the teacher and the students to mark the scope of knowledge they are exposed to, de to deal with. It is a book used as a standard work for the study of a particular subject. It contains facts about a particular subject that is used by a people studying that subject. It is a collection of the knowledge, concepts and principles of a selected topic of co or course. It is usually written by one or more teachers and college professors or educational experts who are the authorities in the specific field. Textbooks represent the syllabus of the course and India's school curriculum is extremely textbook centered. It is a course book, a formal manual of instruction in specific subjects especially one for use in schools. A textbook is written material including syllabus. It gives proper direction to implement the prescribed syllabus. Schools impart knowledge through textbooks and other sources. It may be prescribed for the course and the school knowledge is in the form of a textual knowledge. So textbooks represent textual knowledge. We see the textbooks at the elementary, high school, vocational and at college level and e-books are common nowadays 
and they can be regularly updated online. It incorporates video and online connectivity. Few facts about syllabus and text. Syllabus, it is concerned with the content part of the curriculum. It includes the knowledge aspect. Syllabus is confined only to classroom. Syllabus, which the teacher gives to the students. And syllabus includes only curricular activities. Whereas the textbook, textbook is concerned with the written material and includes only the syllabus. And the textbook includes textual knowledge. Classroom uh, work becomes more systematic with the textbook. And it is an easily available resource for teachers as well as students. And the textbook provides direction to implement this implement syllabus. Curriculum framework. School is crucial in preparing children to become their future selves. School is an agency for socialization which build a network of friends and like-minded community teamwork. These school activities are based on curriculum. The whole life of school becomes the curriculum with uh, touch the life of students at all points and help in the evolution of their balanced personality. In some cases, people see the curriculum entirely in terms of the subjects that are taught and, uh, and are set out within the set of textbooks. The fur and forget, in some cases, people see the curriculum entirely in terms of the subjects that are taught and are set out, and are set out within the set of textbooks and forget the wider goals of competencies and personal development. This is why a curriculum framework is important. It sets the subjects within these wider contexts and shows how learning experiences within the subject need to, need to contribute to the attainment of the wider goals. National Curriculum Framework Guidelines for Curriculum Transaction The NCF 2005 aims to guide the development and transaction of curriculum in schools and to address the problems of transmission of information and rote learning. It includes guidelines for curriculum transaction to make learning active, social and meaningful. Schools are supposed to adopt these guidelines. The guidelines are as follows. Connecting knowledge to life and outside the school. Ensuring the learning shifts away from rote methods. Enriching the curriculum so that it goes beyond textbooks. Making examinations more flexible and integrating them with classroom life. And nurturing an overriding identity informed by caring concerns within the democratic policy of the country. The first guideline aims to contextualize learning and ensure that the content gets a broader perspective as it is linked to the life of the learners during the instructional process. The second guideline intends that learners are enabled to link new and old learning so that they develop conceptual clarity and are encouraged to think critically and apply learning. The third guideline aims to address the problems of considering textbooks as the sole and final source of knowledge. It is in fact an extension of the first guideline and requires that learners be introduced to various sources of knowledge. This will introduce learners to various views, sometimes even contradictory ones, and help them to build a perspective that may accommodate diverse opinions. The fourth guideline seeks to make assessment a formative process so that teaching and assessment determines each other and the meaningfulness of learning can be ascertained on a continuous basis. The language of the fifth guideline is complex and so is its intention. It underscores the need to raise awareness, nurture a sense of identity and the ability for critical thinking on socio-political realities. It also intends that learners are helped in internalizing India's constitutional values of equality, justice, liberty and fraternity so that democracy does not remain only as a form of governance but becomes a way of life for them. Thus, while making learning an active process to be carried out through group activities, it seeks to impart, to tra impart training in citizenship for India and a democratic policy. For implementing these guidelines, the NCF suggests pedagogies involving in activities of various kinds like reading, discussion, sharing experiences and creating things and so on to be carried out collaboratively. In Indian schools, understanding has been bartered away for memory-based short-term information accumulation for examination using information-laden textbooks. The learning outcomes are also low. Therefore, the quality of education is a cause of concern. 
However, the learning outcomes of open schools are overlooked and the use of information packaged as SLM for summative assessment is also accepted. These are the words given by the NCF in the year 2005. SLM is Simplified Learning Materials. Moreover, those educated by open schools also become part of workforce and many aspire, many may aspire to higher education. One of the mission statements of NIOS also says that efforts are ensuring equity in education do not end with providing success but also include deliberate measures worked out to ensure quality of education. To improve instructional processes, schools are supposed to implement the NCF that include guidelines for curriculum transaction and the existing ground realities and curricular documents reveal that all the NCFs emphasize the concerns and issues but do not make a very clear connection between the concerns, aims and curricular contents. Plan starts from where the child is, enumerates all the aspects and dimensions of learning that are considered necessary, gives reasons why such and such learning is considered necessary and what educational aims it would serve. This plan also defines stage-specific objectives, what content to, pe to teach and how to organize it. It also recommends general principles of teaching methods and evaluation and criteria for good teaching learning material. Justifications of the basis for making curriculum choices are very important. The key to understand the question of curriculum choice is to understand the relationship between the curriculum and the aims of education. Therefore, the curriculum is viewed more as a conceptual structure for decision making rather than details of what is to be done in the classroom. The structure demands workable principles and criteria in most of the areas such as selection and organization of content ways of interacting with children and classroom organization and type of teaching learning material etc. What is perceived to be important is what forms of basis for the choices made in syllabus, pedagogical decisions, textbooks, etc. It is also suggested that a set of foundational assumptions a curriculum framework uses needs to be internally consistent, as clearly articulated as possible and acceptable to all stakeholders.